Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Thursday, May 20th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk NBA basketball. Let's talk about a play I like, a series price I like in the first round of the playoffs. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> now, let me just say, the Milwaukee Bucks, who are going off at a minus 300, are facing Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat again. The teams have history. The Miami Heat got through the Bucks last year on their way to the NBA Finals. Right? And keep in mind, there's scuttlebutt about Milwaukee not being able to get over the hump, right? Milwaukee's been an excellent team in recent years, but they have yet to get to an NBA Finals with Giannis. Well, this year, I believe this series is going to go differently because of Drew Holiday. In my opinion, he's one of the most underrated players in the league. He is simply excellent defensively. He also gives them 17 points a game and helps, let's say, support Chris Middleton, uh, Brooke Lopez, uh, and Giannis. Right? I believe in big moments, having Drew Holiday is going to help this team immensely. So, I believe the Bucks, who you're getting at shorter odds than some of the other favorites in these series prices for the first round of the playoffs have a point to prove are on a mission they have home court in the series I like them at minus 300 over the Miami Heat right I think Milwaukee is focused I think they're a better team than last year and I think it's going to show in this first round. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Um, just going around the way I see the uh, playoffs turning out, I think Philly beats either Indiana or Washington. Uh, I'm staying away from the Knicks series. Thibodeau has a history of having teams do well in the regular season and then fold up in the postseason. As I said, I like the Bucks over the Heat. I'm expecting Brooklyn to dismantle the Boston Celtics. I like Utah over either Golden State or Memphis. I like the Los Angeles Clippers over the Dallas Mavericks. The Clippers are a real sleeper in this whole thing, right? Utah, of course, is the top seed. Understand, too, it's my understanding that they're not going to reseed, right, in this year's playoffs. So the Clippers don't face the Lakers or wouldn't have to face the Lakers until after they get by the first two rounds of the playoffs, and I think that's going to help them, right? I'm staying away from Denver-Portland simply because Jamal Murray is out, so I can't trust the season stats, right? The season stats look one way. The problem is Murray is an impact player, especially in big games. Look at his record in last year's playoffs, right? The fact that he's out, I don't like it, right? Also, Portland, and Portland's not the team Denver is, but Portland does have long-range shooters who could get hot, Right? Not just Dame, but also Car Carmelo. Finally, I'm staying away from the Phoenix Suns against the Lakers. Let me just say this diplomatically. And I congratulate the Lakers on beating the Golden State Warriors yesterday. I congratulate LeBron on hitting the big shot in that game to give the Lakers the margin of victory. Right? And I congratulate the Lakers for keeping it together. They were down big at halftime. They kept it together and came back in the second half. But I'll say this. Father Time is undefeated, unfortunately. And to me, LeBron James, at times, 
is looking a little bit older, right? First half, I thought LeBron struggled immensely. I know he ends the game with a triple-double, but I thought he was struggling in that first half. I thought there was a reason Golden State was up big, right, in that game, up double digits at halftime. Um, you know, I also don't like the idea of LeBron coming back from a high ankle sprain. Uh, ankles are the kind of thing where they can remind you of that injury at any time, right? Um, I get the feeling the Lakers are better on paper than they are on the court, right? Also, Phoenix, you know, Devin Booker on any given night could pop for 50 points, right? This is an explosive score he has. A point guard, to me, when you have a point guard like Chris Paul, that's exactly what a young team needs in the playoffs, right? When the bullets start flying, the Suns are going to be organized, right? If you, like me, have money on the Suns as part of a long-term future, here's an opportunity to hedge it a little bit. But I'm not convinced that the Lakers get by the Suns, even though the Lakers are favored in the series. Right? The first half, they just looked uninspired. I thought um, some of their players, uh, Wesley Matthews, what happened to him? His game is gone. Uh, Caldwell Pope, too mercurial, too much of a streak player for me. Right? Speaking of streak players, Kyle Kuzma, I don't believe you can depend on that guy every night. Right? So as I look at the Lakers, uh, let's just say I have my reservations enough where I'm not touching the Suns-Lakers series, even though the Lakers are the defending champs. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments and perhaps your picks and insight in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.